Hello and welcome along to Off the Court, your guide to all things Vitality Netball Super League in the company of the She Gets Things One. Multiple Super League winner Tamsin Greenway and me, Caroline Barker. Coming up, the doctor will see you now. Well, in a minute. Uh, Leila Guskuth's here and we're checking the pulse of the top four <laughs> with Sam Bird. First up, though, I think you need to stick a heart rate monitor on me and plug me into round 18, Tamsin. As it went off, some really tight, tight games. Yeah, well, we're going to forget the top four challenge for just a little bit because actually some of the other games were incredible. First of all, uh, Was versus Loughborough. I don't think anyone saw that result coming, of course. Loughborough had Nat Panagari back, still no Mary Chollock, and then no Beth Cobden as well. So that was quite interesting. Was pushing them all the way. I think it's 54-52. Mel Mansfield very happy with how that group's progressing. And actually, although they haven't set the world alight this year, there's so much experience those youngsters have gained. And then, of course, Rhinos. Oh, wow. Goal for goal game. You know, out of their 18 rounds this season, they've had nine of those. Half of their games that were within five. Another goal for goal thriller. They just got over the line by one goal in the end. That Stars will be kicking themselves for letting that get away from them. I mean, the Rhinos fans, three games they've watched this year, with, which have gone down to one goal, down to the last dying seconds. Incredible. Not enough probably to get them into the top four now with Bath getting that win. But I tell you what, they were cracking games to have in round 18. Yeah, it reminded me of, of when you're having a little nice walk out, maybe during April and the sun's out, you're having a good time. It's all nice and relaxed. And all of a sudden there's an almighty thunderstorm. <laughs> and that's what it felt like, that close up right at the end. Um, Tracy Robinson getting a, a brilliant farewell from Rhinos. And you kind of imagine they'll keep that up to the end of the season, even though, even though, Top four out of reach now. Let's talk about that that race for the top four then. Pulse securing their seat in finals weekend with a win at Sirens. There was a win and a loss for Mavericks. Rhino putting that pressure on Bath with a win over Stars. But the five times champions did what they needed to do with their win in Wales. Okay, let's get to it then. Thunder and Lightning ready to frighten come June. But who was ready to raise the pulse? The club's tweet said it best, four seasons in the making, but history made for London Pulse. They've qualified for the final four with three rounds to go. Tamsin, they made the bye weekend count, didn't they? They came back, went to Scotland, got the 57-41 win at Sirens, and they were, what, 5 nil up off the sweat? Brilliant start. It was a brilliant start. And actually, their best first quarter score this whole competition. So a 17-10 score. And, and Pulse have been known to slow start, you know, have to build up into a game and sometimes chase. So that would have thrilled coach Sam Bird. I was most impressed with just how composed, how disciplined, how determined. That was a tricky away fixture to come and get a result at. And they nailed it. More importantly, they rode the storm. In the second quarter, Sirens came right back at them, brought the score back to within two. However, enter the game, Jazz Odia Baron, who ended up with player of the match. She was incredible. And they won the third quarter 12 six you can just see the changes the way they're able to adapt tactically mixing up what they're doing in their squad but also bringing players on that made impact Ash Decker having the same kind of impact as well so look a fantastic victory gives them some breathing space allows them some time now to actually properly prep for the semi-finals because when it's your first time in that is a big deal they know who they're going to face they know what they need to do and they've got the next few weeks to work on it we all know about formative relationships, right? And what it can do for your long-term future happiness. For England's future happiness, seeing these young players step up, playing together on court is a wonderful, wonderful thing. You mentioned Jazz Odia bearing player of the match. Talk to me then about how generally it was won. Yeah, well, Paul's sitting with the best defensive record in the league. Just keep your eye on Jazz Odia Baron here. She tracks along with Neve McCall, but looks, takes her chances on Beth Dix, does enough to put pressure on, and you see the little... Fist pump in the air, very Ebony-esque as well. Wins the ball for her team. And this defensive pressure is lethal from this centre pass. You're going to watch again. Just watch the tracking and the control from Odia Baron. Look how Zara Everett shoves in. So Neve doesn't want to go over arms. Emily Nicholl, the same thing. Passes back and forces an error. That's because this defensive end are just running and tracking in. And they are a big unit. And finally, they're just as lethal through court as well. Look at the full court pressure from Sheen, from McDonald, from Lysia Skulls. They get pinged here with a penalty, but look at the setup again. And keep your eye when Gia Abernethy comes through and takes this ball. There's just this mass disconnect by throwing it up. The big arms by Decker, nothing coming forward to her, having to go back again. Watch Kelly Boyle being tracked. They don't want to go there. And this is important. As McCall throws this ball over the top, Pulse slot back into their unit. Sirens having to do all the running, and that is a hell ball. This unit is getting better and better, and they are winning so much ball. 
Well, Sam Bird joins us now. Sam, congratulations. I've read a lot this last few days about this being the most important moment in Pulse history. Is, is that how you'd rank it? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's a fantastic time for the club. Uh, we are very proud of making the top four for the first time. And, um, you know, I've had some lovely meetings with our board and lots of lovely messages. And it's a, a great time and exciting time to be part of London Pulse. Sam, I just wanted to um, pick up on how important the culture has been this season. We know we've got so many young, talent, talented players come through, so many picked up into the England programme. I want to talk about that Aussie influence as well. I think eyebrows were raised when Lisa Alexander came over, everyone got very excited. And then, of course, Taylor Honey and Sasha McDonald. I want to know what they've brought to this group in terms of not only off the court and training intensity, but also that kind of tactical element on the court as well. Yeah, they've been really good. Um, they're, um, I would say, quietly confident and determined individuals, and that sort of fits in around the rest of the squad in that everybody's still really desperate to improve um, and learn and push each other, and they fitted in really nicely to that. Um, they obviously come from Vixens, which is... Um, a very uh, high intense uh, sort of environment and they've brought that um, level of intensity to our training along with Lisa Alexander of course um, but I think we've got an environment where you know the players do want to improve and they're uh, always uh, asking questions you know how do I do this that you know there's the very little of that drive has to come from me it's um, really about that that group itself wanting to achieve high things for the club and to push each other on to become the best they can be. So it's an absolute pleasure to, to work in that environment. And they're, they're good people off the court and very supportive and get on well. But it's really, they're all the same sort of beast, really. So although they're very diverse personalities with diverse backgrounds, they all want to um, really reach the very best of their potential. We talk about them wanting to improve and, and reaching the potential. I'm guessing just being in top four is not going to be enough for this group, and, and so it shouldn't be. But you've got a tough away semi. I'm going to guess it's going to be against Loughborough Lightning, and you haven't beaten them so far in the league this season. What what does the next few weeks look like? Because I know as a coach, when I used to get into this position, you'd be happy because you've got a few weeks just to tick away, have a look. Tactically now, is, is that the plan? Is that look ahead to Loughborough, or is there still some unfinished business with the last couple of fixtures? Well, we want to respect the opposition we still have to play. We have three tough games and obviously we want some momentum going into those playoffs. Um, so we want to give the respect um, to each opponent we have coming up. But you're right, Tamsin, it, it is a really good luxury to, for us to now to start experimenting a little bit um, in terms of um, who might bring something different in that playoff, um, who might um, put Loughborough you know, off, off their stride, uh, who can be a game changer that may not have even appeared yet. Um, and certainly in training, there are a couple of players putting their hands up to do that role. So it is it's a great opportunity for us to just start to look at a couple of different things as well and finally dare to dream because I think it's really important when you're in this position that you do think about making that final um probably going to be thunder I can't see anybody else beating them to, to get in there uh they've looked pretty untouchable this season however you guys do have the best defensive record in the league and I think there's been major improvements over the season in the attack end as well are they beatable? Is home advantage something you'd think about? The copper box, amazing fan base, everything else. You know, is this something that this group can go on and win this title this season? Oh, we would say yes. Good. Um, we're eternally optimistic um, as a group. And we only lost to Thunder, I think it was by three maybe, up in Manchester. And um, we, we actually think we match up quite nicely to them. You know, they've got the best attack. We've got the best defence. Um, we, we love a challenge. Um, I feel and we feel that our, our team is in the ascendancy. Um, we can only get better with every match um, and with every season that comes. And, um, you, you know, we're, we're optimistic about, you know, upsetting a few of the bookies' um, guesses, really. <laughs> so we're, we're, there, we're there to try and win um, and always give our best. And, and we'll do that in, in the playoffs in both matches. I want to go back to when you said that there's some players we haven't seen yet that we might see. I mean... Apart from me, who's left to see, Sam? <laughs> We've seen some brilliant talent. Where do you keep pulling them all from? Well, well as, as I say, in, in training, it's just 
so competitive but so supportive as well so um, you had a little glimpse of Berry Neal at the goal attack, her favoured position against Sirens at the weekend. And bless her, a little face lit up when I said, right, you're going on for 10 minutes at goal attack. Um, she, she offers something different. We've still got Kira Rothwell offering something different. Um, it, we've, we've got players all over the court that um, we can really start to look at how they match up to our opponents and who might perform really well on their day. Um, so... You know, the intensity, if it's possible, will be going up even more at training. And we want players to fight for positions. We don't we don't ever want anyone thinking they're just the first name on the team sheet. Um, they have to earn it. And that's what drives the success and the performances. It is brilliant to watch. And what's it doing for inspiring the next generation? When you look around the, the copper box, do you see those young girls and boys that want to get involved in netball as a result of these powerhouses that they're watching? Yeah, absolutely. And sort of with my CEO hat on, you know, um, one of my, I'm not just very ambitious about what we do on the court, but off the court as well. And uh, we want to fill the copper box in the next couple of seasons. You know, we want our home games to have 7,000 people at them. Um, and on Monday against Manchester, um, just looking through who who's attending, we have over 30 schools attending this match. And all, all that goes around in my head is, you know, is there the next Fumi coming to watch? Is there the next Kira Rothwell coming to watch? You know, local kids that are inspired by our fantastic role models. And, um, you, you know, it's, it's part of the job and the passion we have is to, um, you know, expose our sport to new people and for that many it's going to be so loud it's going to be carnage uh, for that many school kids to be coming to watch and be inspired by these players is really really exciting for us I know that you've been there and done it before as, as a coach Sam but what will you be saying and actually I'll start with you Tamsin what do you say to those younger players when they, they're going into finals weekend and particularly as you as a coach times when you were first there what are you saying to you, yourself about about that moment and taking that moment yeah well I was a coach I, I tend to not to not put that on the players I do the blag with the players we've got this we're going to win the tactical elements as a coach I was always nervous and I and I think Sam will, will probably pick up on this in a second but um once you're there and you've done all your work, there's very little you can do on that day. So it's all about the prep work. I think for the youngsters, one of the things I, I relish working with some of the players at Storm and then and then through into Wasp was um, that fearlessness that they have coming through. And that's what I've most loved about watching Paul. So I've talked about those early days for us at Bath. You have this group who who just hearing Sam talk about it are so determined. They, they're going to go into a, an environment that a lot of them haven't experienced before. But that's not necessarily a bad thing because on the day, they're just going to throw everything at it. And I think top with that, you've got a lot of talent as well. Um, Sam, are you cool, calm and controlled? I mean, I always am from the exterior, never underneath. But how are you feeling going into it? No, I, I'm rubbish. <laughs> I um, pace up and down. I can't sit still. I get very excited. I was like that as a player. And that's sort of the personality I am. You know, I, I thrive off big big match days I absolutely love them and I've missed them and I, I'm really excited um, Fiona's very different personality to me she's much more measured and then Lisa is sort of a bit of a mix between the two of us so um, I, but I think what we'll all be feeling is a great sense of pride but a great sense of determination to show up and um, play our part in trying to win this thing because that's what we're here to do and um, just give our very best and encourage those players to give their very best as well. I still think that Vitality are missing a trick. Those those watches that they give away when you sign up to them, they should stick them on all the coaches and your heart rate's be going through the roof, <laughs> through the copper box roof. Uh, thank you, Sam. We wish you all the best of luck between now and the end of the season. You can see Sam's team in action on June the 5th, tickets on sale for the grand final weekend by the Vitality Netball Super League website. We will assess Mavericks and Bath next on Off the Court.
and you're watching Off the Court with me, Caroline Barker, and her Tamsin Greenway. Thank you for everyone that's got in touch about the show so far this season. Tamsin's is a brain for hire, though. If you want her to analyse a player at a moment, you can get in touch. Use the hashtag Off the Court. I don't know if you saw Zara's tweet about Shaconda Green Noel on last week's show, Tamsin, but she was saying that every young netballer should watch her and watch the interview because she loved that quote that you can't rely on anyone else to clap you, so you have to clap yourself or something along those lines. Talking of Quanda, more dancing coming up later, by the way, in social, but who will be hot-stepping into that fourth place, Tamsin? Mavericks, they beat Storm, then lost the Thunder. It was always going to be a rough weekend, not least for weather puns, right? But how would you assess that top four shaping up, and Saracens Mavericks in particular? Yeah, well, well, look, Mavericks, um, I, it was a weekend of expected results, wasn't it? They got themselves over the line against Surrey Storm. They lost to the Thunder. No shockers there, really. Um, it's still all left to play for. Mavericks, I just feel like this consistent group that we were talking about that we had such high hopes for has just kind of fallen off the wagon the last few weeks. They had that one goal loss against Bath where it totally turned the tables where they were ahead, they were leading, they were dictating. Um, Vent has been out for a while. Brick Clark came in and did a great job. Vent are now back. And then, of course, they get Vent back. And what happens? Raz Quashi, sadly, has got to go off and have another operation, which has meant Kadeen Corbin has stepped up into that role. She had a great weekend at goalkeeper. She uh, turned over, I think it was seven balls in total across the two games. So a fantastic performance, bearing in mind who she was playing against, Proscovia Peace and Joy Sambula. Um, But what does it do? It disrupts the other end. So Chloe Essam then stepping into that goal attack role. And I just think... For Mavs, although they got the results that were probably likely this weekend, they will now struggle to push Bath, who got that victory over Celtic Dragons. It's going to be a tough ass for them. Um, and I think for me, the damage was done a few weeks back. The loss to Bath, the loss to Sirens, end of season. They do have Mavericks, Rhinos, and then a possible winner takes all against Team Bath to come. Perfect moment to talk Bath then. That winner at Dragons, not an easy place to go. No, it wasn't. And we were expecting big things from that game, weren't we? And of course, um, they got themselves over the line. Five goal victory in the end. It was kind of going uh, very close <laughs> periods um, in that game. Um, but yeah, they got the win. They got the victory. It's helped them. It's ticked another box. It's put the pressure back on Mavericks. And one player that's been hugely instrumental in their whole season this far and is going to be the same for England is Leila Guskoff. And I've got some clips to take a look at. I could have picked any game here for Leila Guskos this season. She's sitting top in the intercepts with 52. As Loughborough passed this ball through the court, Leila Guskos comes on a flying intercept to take the ball. She can do magic through the court as well as on her player. Take a look at this next clip here. Just the tracking and constant work rate she does on Emma Thacker. She just keeps moving around that play. You're going to watch her come into shot again. She gets her on her back, and this is important because she's able to set up, and although it's a loose pass, she's in the right place. It's right place, right time because of her superb positioning. Finally, it's her presence that's impressed me the most, and Bath have needed this. Again, you're just going to watch her tracking in the shot. She's always looking to hunt. She's always looking to shut down the player. Both of those things are hard to do. Just look at this shot down there on the two and one, but what's more important, when Ella Clark gets this ball, just the jump and over the shot. This is when we talk about presence. Clark usually so dominant under the post. Not this time because of that leap from Guskoff who gets the intercept. And then just look how she gets her team going. This game was another example of how much ball Bath are winning and not converting. Layla, a huge part in keeping Bath in so many games. Well, Layla joins us on Off the Court. Layla, brilliant to have you with us. I wonder how you're feeling after that, that result in Wales. And what did that win tell you about the spirit in your team and what you've got? Yeah, I'm feeling a little bit tired this morning, Um, but we knew that would be a really hard game. And I think Dragons have have taken it all the way with quite a few teams and have taken a few teams. And we need to win to make top four and almost they don't have that pressure to do that and so we knew it'd be tough uh it was physical there were a lot of bodies on the floor um but you know the points are points at the moment so we're happy to have got it and happy to be on to the next one Leila, I just want to talk to you about this season because it's it's fair to say Bath have had everything thrown at them this year and you, you're still there you're still fighting for top four 
Um, we know how instrumental you've been in that defensive end. And, and um, I want to talk about kind of the frustration that can come with that as well, because you're turning over a lot of ball as a defensive unit, and you in particular. Um, how much has it helped you sort of really learn to win this year? Because, you know, it's not you've not always come on the end of the best result, but you've still been getting a lot of ball. So your game is constantly improving. Have you had to... Uh, sort of calm things down? Have you had to speak to the team? Is it something you've learned and do you think that's something that's going to help you internationally this season? Yeah, I think so. And it's funny because over the years, Serena's always been our slightly hot-headed one. So she's always <laughs> the one that when things go a bit wrong, you know, you'll get a bit of a shout. Um, and I remember it was maybe like the second game of the season where I found myself shouting and I thought, oh my gosh, what's happened? Like I've taken over Serena's role here. Um, so it's been, yeah, it's been an interesting season. And I think, you know, we've had to learn to adapt to a lot of things and losing Serena, all the COVID stuff we've had, which loads of teams have had, so it's not an excuse, but it's it's been a tough one for sure to try and navigate. Um, for me, off the, the back of pod series anyway, I kind of wanted to work on learning to win and like in those moments where teams feel like they're getting on top of you, like how to try and stop that and how to make an impact. So I think it's given me experience to be able to try and do that because we've been certainly on the end of quite a few runs. <laughs> um, so yeah. There's stuff that I've definitely learned that I can take into international stuff and, and try and build and develop. Yeah, well, it's been absolutely huge and so noticeable. And I, and I think the way you've managed that and helped that team, it will be invaluable for them moving forward as well, regardless of what happens this season. I'm most looking forward to you stepping out into the court in Birmingham, though. I think we all felt that pain at the World Cup in Liverpool um, when you got that early injury. And it was... a uh, you know, the way you were playing and the, the the influence you were having at the defence end, it was a huge loss for England. You know, no one can shy away from that. But Commonwealth Games just around the corner. Likelihood you're going to be going. Um, what does that look like? Like, what what is the dream, the ambition, not only for you, but for that England group as well? Is, is this the big moment for you? 2019 was really disappointing because I, I felt quite good and I felt like, you know, there'd been many times over the years before that I'd been very in and out of squads and never, like, consolidated a place at all. And it felt like I was getting to a stage where I thought, oh, I can, like, maybe push into this and, like, maybe push into the starting seven and just maybe, like, keep creeping my way in. Um, so, yeah, it was a bit disappointing to have that. So, for me, this means a lot, this lot of this Commonwealth Games um, to get the opportunity if I can to like play on that world stage play in a major tournament um, and like offer what I can to the team um, and I think for the team it, it feels like a moment too like I think everyone doesn't want 2018 to just be a thing that happened in history and, and there's nothing that's built off the back of it so I think everyone wants to go in with a view to win um knowing that it i mean it's not going to be easy like global netball at the moment is just kind of mad and watching all of the the amazing jamaican players like crushing it in suncorp and the aussies and the kiwis and everybody like it's going to be a really tough competition but i think the team's confident and aiming to go in there and, and win a gold medal well swinging it back then to the Super League and for you in this this running now, given all that the team's been through, also that it's Anna Stembridge's fourth, uh, last year as, as coach, what would it mean to you and the team to get to that final and, and to lift that trophy again? Yeah, it, it would be so good. Um, and I keep thinking, I think it was oh, maybe like five or six years ago where I played for Mavericks. Um, and we had a really similar season where we probably weren't as good as we should have been and we scraped into that top four and I remember we went to Thunder who were undefeated at the time and managed to make the final um, and then got heavily beaten by Tamsin's team in the final so don't tell anyone that extra bit I think when you get to finals anything can happen and so I think 
Um, we need to get ourselves there. Like, we're certainly not clear at all. And Mavs have, have got it in their hand as well. Um, but, yeah, it would be really good to make the final. It'd be really good to send Anna off in the right way. She's been such a great coach for Bath and, you know, has implemented so much and helped this country with netball. So to send her off in the right way would be pretty good, I think. Absolutely. Leila, as always, it's, it's a real pleasure watching you on court and talking to you off it To um, Anyone in defence with you is iconic, but we loved watching the proper ding dong that was you one end and Green Noel the other uh, this week in round 18. So looking forward to many more between now and the end of the season. Although, although on Monday Night Netball, if anyone saw it, there was another iconic duo giving you a run for your money this weekend. Time to have a look at social. Huge fans are you. MNN meets MNF. Gary Neville, Jamie Carragher on the Monday night sofa with Di was a, a magical, magical moment. Got loads of social off the back of that too. Some other magical moments this weekend. Manchester Thunder were celebrating international diversity. There was a brilliant dance as well. Shadeen van der Merwe bringing it on and off court. And she, she tweeted about what a wonderful moment it was and, and thank Thunder and Debbie Hallis and what they're doing. And then you were there to experience Super Saturday at Sirens, Tams. And clubs, talking about Thunder, talking about Sirens, across the board, really, really stepping up the experience this season. Yeah, of course. And we heard from Sam Bird earlier about uh, their experiences down at London Pulse and trying to build this fan base. Well, Sirens nailed it on Saturday. Super Saturday, I was up there for with my Scotland hat on, but there was over 3,000 fans in the arena. They'd moved it onto the big court. There was... Uh, DJs on the concourse had had different chats and speaks and, and Q&As. We had all the Sirens Academies there, the development squad, invited teams in. It was just a real good showdown, a real netball environment and something really special. And actually, this is what teams need to build towards. They're getting great one-off events and they're absolutely fantastic. And we want to make keep sure, sure we're pushing the boundaries and making sure we're getting that week in, week out. I might be totally distracted. I was just thinking what your actual Scotland hat looks like. Uh, Bath, Wasps, Rhinos, Mavericks, Dragon, Sirens, Lightning Stars, Storm, Pulse, Pulse, Thunder is a brilliant new rap. It's also the fixtures for round 19. Which game stands out for you? Can I suggest it might be Pulse, Thunder? Yeah, well, that is a big one, isn't it? And could that be a final in a couple of weeks? Who knows? But yeah, that's going to be huge. And just keep your eye on Bath as well against Wasps. It will be a tricky game. Again, they do not have an easy run. Wasps playing very well at the moment. So Bath are going to go and have to be there and perform. Shall we have the Bath Bath debate right now? No. Let's have it using the hashtag off the court. Uh, Thank you, Tamsin Greenway. Thank you, Layla. And thank you, Sam Bird too. Thank you for watching. Give us a like. If you want, get in touch. That would be better. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. 